Genetically Modified Organisms and Polyploids by William H. Bradshaw. All of the information contained in this video is also can be found in the book Secrets of the Pink Kush. Genetically Modified Organisms and Polyploids. Genetically Modified Organisms, or GMOs, is defined as any plant, animal, or microbe whose genes have been directly and deliberately altered by humans. The only real problem with GMOs, in my opinion, is that individual gametes are modified, and this does not occur in nature, except through evolution, cell adaptation, viruses, etc. Doubling the chromosomes using a mitotic poison, example, colchicine or orzalin, does not affect any individual gametes, but the entire set of chromosomes, except in the case of mixoploidy. Legally, and even technically, it may be a GMO, but merely doubling the chromosomes does not negatively affect the organism, in my opinion. And in fact, it makes it superior. Modifying an individual gamete, example, altering the gene that makes apples go brown when they rot, is negatively impacting or the organism and is a threat to nature and or humans and any other creatures who consume these genetically modified organisms. They cannot tell when the fruit is spoiled and thus may cause illness or even death and may even adversely impact that species over the long term directly due to genetically modified organisms. Chromosome doubling has been proven to occur in nature. Examples, strawberries, coffee, viscasha rat, giant redwood tree, tetraploid humans, etc. If it does or can occur in nature, then it is not a GMO, or at least a molesting or interfering with nature GMO. If the modifications result in aneuploidy, which is an abnormal chromosome count, then the organism will, most likely, be susceptible to diseases. Those interested in breeding should be aware that it is not recommended to develop or maintain a population of aneuploidy organisms. For example, having a cannabis plant with 21 chromosomes rather than 20 for a normal diploid. It should, in my opinion, be a multiple of the original haploid or it will have severe deficiencies, examples susceptible to cancer in humans or spider mites in plants, in some areas despite having some potentially good qualities. Okay, I have absolutely no issues with chromosome doubling, but I do have issues with individual alteration of gametes as this is pure molestation, which is interfering with the course of nature. I believe that companies like Monsanto are effectively molesting our crops and ultimately us, and it could have far more reaching consequences for which many people are not currently aware. I hope this clears things up for those who are interested in this highly controversial topic of genetically modified organisms. Please note that viruses can cause mutations and are an integral part of gene mutation and thus of evolution. I will let you consider the implications of that statement. The anti-vaccination people may very well have a valid point that is never mentioned from either of the two opposing camps, pro-vaccination and anti-vaccination, as they never include this fact. Is some organization attempting to alter or thwart evolution?